Okay, no worries. Uh, we have the topic of today's NFTs to spark social impact. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be talking about how that could be possible. And I would love to hear from all of you what ideas you have about that and how we can connect like NFTs and blockchain technology in general, maybe as well, uh, to really help to to spark that impact. And with spark, we mean like accelerate, decentralize, empower, and make like all these people that are doing an amazing job on uh creating the world a better place and how we can actually help them with this technology and how you can envision that, what the future would look like. So I think that will be a great conversation. There is already a lot of people here that I know I'd love to hear from. Um, so I'm not sure that I can just uh, give someone the word and uh, try to uh, get a glimpse of what is going on in this imagination of how we can do that. If you want me to start, I'm Camila from Cruces Rosas. Uh, we are in Mexico. Here's my partner, Tatiana. We found this movement on November 2018, and we have been really into the art funding of our organization. So we started connected with art since the very beginning, and we have three collections during the year that we used to do until we met you. Uh, very in a very traditional way, <laughs> but now we are very excited to get uh, to know you, to see that you are also doing good for real. You are connecting us with uh, artists and really with uh, uh, people that want to invest in this vision. We are working on gender violence here in Latin America, so I think it's great to get to know how this new world is going to behave and i was thinking before getting to this uh event that most of the time we are more focused on the problems that we have as an uh sio and not in the many and new solutions that are available so i think you getting in touch with us is such an amazing amazing thing because it's very hard to get to know all the nft technology and how we can be part of that new world coding. So I'm very excited to be here. Thank you Kami, so thank much. Thank you so Camilla. much. Yeah, I was just thinking the same. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. So I, I wanted to, uh, so I'm, by way of introduction, I'm Wendy Fayer, and I'm one of the members of the team that, um, that connects with, reaches out to, and uh, invites social impact organizations of all kinds, anywhere in the world, to uh, join the doing good ecosystem and be a part of um, this expression of human creativity and uh, expansion of act democratization of um, Democratization. Sorry, the phones are beeping. Um, democratization of of basically everything. Um, Cami, I wanted to ask you a question. I, I think you said something there that uh, that all all of us who've worked nonprofit sector can experience, which is we focus so much on uh, trying to help and how little resource sometimes we have to help people, and mm -hmm. that um, that focus. Um, makes it hard to look for new ideas, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. What is it that made this really sort of bleeding edge, bleeding edge technology? What made you think this is a possibility at this time? Mm. I just think we need to flow with what is going on. So I'm not asking it is better. It is, you know, I'm not judging if NFT is better. It's just the new thing, and we need to get involved in the new things. So, whatever is coming, I think we should be part of that uh, conversation. But since my experience, uh, ONGs, um, you say SIO, right? Uh, social Impact Organization. Tech. 
uh, conversation, most of us. <laughs> I don't want to explain that we are from Latin America, so we are years behind you anyway. Um, but I, I will I will think that with no bad reason, right, uh, we are focused on the things that really uh, are uh, urgent. Like we are taking, we are trying to help lives or to save people. We are trying to make uh, like a better daily day to a woman that is, I don't, I don't know, raped or work things. So it's a reality. We don't have time to do research or to have connections. So I think something awesome about doing good is that you have those network sessions like this one and more. So you get to like you get to know people. Their experience also help you to uh, get into the topic very fast. all the links, all the information. So I think you're making it easier for us that we don't have time. And I guess none of here have time, but <laughs> that's our problem. And my my opinion is we need to get fast into the new things without judging much. That is how we improve, how we test, how we can are able to say this work, this didn't work. This was a bubble. This, is, this was real, you know. But we need to get into, it. and that's why uh, mm. I, mm. I think we need to be brave enough to try. Like for me, this is very brave because we are not into the topic really. <laughs> we know just a little, but just this is the new world, and we wanna we wanna build a better world in technology and democratization and. Uh, this new coding is the new way to go, I'll say. Yeah, and I'm really happy to hear that as well. Yeah, because as well, like, at least for me, how I would imagine it, like, uh, I don't expect uh, everybody to know everything about NFTs. In the end, it's a, it's a technology, um, but it's being used by, by humans like you, like me, like everyone, you know, um, and it's just uh, on one hand, we are so lucky that this technology now is really being explored by humans that are creators and that are really, really pushing the boundaries of what can be done with it. And the way that we connect it like, with organizations is more like in some point in the future, I really, really envision that like you don't probably don't even know that the word is NFTs or that is the technology that has been coded. The only thing that you will notice is that you will get like uh, funds that are coming from various sources um, to actually make your purpose happen. You know, uh, you don't even need to think about really uh, how to apply for them or how to fill in forms like funding or adjust your funding a plan to. Uh, maybe one political agenda from the local government or anything like that. So yeah, that's at least how it, it now it's like a super high because everybody's talking about NFTs, but in the end it's humans and creators that are, uh, you know, it's seeing what can be done and it's very exciting to see what's, what happens. Um, I think that um, you say like, you don't know so much about technology, but you know a lot about humans and you know a lot about a community and how that can develop. So that is something that everybody can bring inside the this experience can bring inside the tech and then it can develop even better so all these points of view are like super super valid right mm. and uh, i see that i, I think one of the oh, Go on. ah rebecca you've made it <laughs> <laughs> yeah rebecca's here hello sorry guys i joined as a list well <laughs> rebecca rounds <laughs> rounds out the team of uh, folks who are reaching out to social impact organizations, nonprofits, and social causes. I just wanted to pick up on something you said, Cami, which I find really interesting and in all the, the, um, the ambitions and challenges around finding new sources, new sources for funding. I find it incredibly exciting and refreshing your approach at this time you, you said something so compelling that we're doing something urgent. We are saving people's lives either immediately 
or in the near future. We're saving people's lives, and this is something we could react to and jump into fast. We can experiment quickly. And I think that that approach, that mindset is uh, incredibly exciting. Have you have you guys always exercised that way? Have you always sort of said, oh, let's jump in, we'll see what happens? <laughs> More than the times that we should. <laughs> We are that way. We we started this. <laughs> we are just used to. We are the kind of uh, partners that we jump into and see if things work or not. I think sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's very very risky. But in this uh, kind of of uh, programs and projects, I think uh, yeah, that's the way we are. I think that's our DNA has creative people that want to do things and the world hasn't changed fast because we are using the same ways to try to fix those problems so the way we are doing the the stuff is not really the way we should that's why we think we need to look for other options and this is a hurry i mean we shouldn't take much time doing planning and da, da, da. like there's something we need to do now I completely, I could not actually agree with you more, Cami. And I think it's actually quite sad how, um, how revolutionary your idea, like of of being so agile, is in the social impact space. Um, I think it's one of one of the slower moving sectors, and rightly so. They do they do carry a lot of weight with them. They carry, you know, the the responsibility of those people that that sort of donate to them and support their causes. But similarly, as you so rightly suggest, it is to be able to solve problems, we have to move fast and, and realize what works and what doesn't. And, and striking that balance between the two, I think, is something that we and, you know, anyone in the social impact space, we really have to sort of work at, at finding that balance between balancing the, the responsibility of, of, of people who are, who are relying on us and who support us and, and, and being able to deliver the impact and the and the the um, the outcomes that are needed and support the people that need help fast enough. Right. I was thinking the other day when we started in Mexico, uh, we have we had eleven feminicidios. Do you know that word in English? Femicidios, femicide. I think eleven femicides mm, mm. daily when we started. <laughs> And now we have 11 femicides daily. So I was like, what in the world? Like, we are a lot of people working on this. Like, how are we going to change this? So I'm very, uh, I'm pushing forward to see new ways, you know, is our new ways of, of funding, but are also new solutions that, uh, as Nicolene said, we don't need, as an organization, we don't need to get like all the details about NFT to be part of doing good. But starting the conversation about this new way of coding, I mean, all the blockchain system, I think it will help not just in this uh, funding area, but it will help to find new ways of sol new solutions because we are not, at least here, we are not getting closer to, to any, like to solving the problem. I don't, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I was very frustrated the other day because the numbers just maintain. So let's find new ways uh, and try. I think when you want to do something, you need to take risk. And that's the way you build something better, just trying. If um, no one has any specific questions, I'd love um, to hear more, Cami, about like your work with uh, your organization in the sort of gender equality and female empowerment space. Is there any sort of anything you're you're excited about that's emerging in that space? Is there any um, other organizations or any any methods or or uh, just any any progress in the space that you're you're, you're seeing? Uh, sorry, will you say it again? I, I don't. get the what did you ask yeah no worries i can repeat it it was a bit of a i was kind of um just wanting to know more about sort of like the the gender 
um, with with progress. I know obviously you're talking about the fact that it's it's difficult to see those numbers stay the same over time. But is there any mm. is there any other organisations that you're enjoying working with? Is there anything that you're excited about and seeing progress with that way? Yeah, um, we're very excited about uh, another project that we. channels, blogs, and a lot of information about the violence. But we focused since uh, pandemia started, we started to work with, uh, related to the violence that a woman experienced in the relationships. Um, and as it started, we offered to our community uh, therapy. Uh, we have two protocols to attend. and uh, different violence experience, 14 weeks of most of the time free therapy. So we are trying to change from the inside out because all the political part, I think is very frustrated. Uh, so we are focusing on every single woman that has, has a struggle or is struggling with violence. And we have those protocols to work for 14 sessions and make her realize that she's not guilty of any of those experience, that she has all the strange inside of her to find out how to get out from that relationship. Because there's a, a huge line between all the things that we do on the streets, like calling the government or any big organization to change all the uh, inequity that we see, but at the end, we need every single woman to make some decisions to understand the reality, to see how violence impacts her life. So we are more focused now on that. And during this week, for example, we had like 600 women and we are growing our database of psychologists because they, they are volunteers. And it's very, very important for us to have people that will help us to give this service. But I'm excited for the things that we are doing. I just think at a certain point, uh, changing from the inside out is better and you see more, uh, you get a better like review of what you do. You know what I mean? Because if you are asking, if you are waiting for the government to change here in Mexico, at least, uh, it's, I think it's hard. <laughs> it won't happen very fast. Yeah, that's amazing, honestly. Oh, I love that. We can change, like, one life, and, and that's, that's good. So one question, and I invite you to imagine uh, that happening. Like, uh, what if tomorrow you will receive, like, a huge sum of donation, like, an uh, insane amount, like, let's say, uh, one million? What would be the first thing that you would do or change in your organization? <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Uh, we really, really need to have a platform for those women to apply to therapy and do not do it one by one. Now we have a very horrible system because we do it through email or we have a type form, but it's not good. Like It's not enough. You need to call the uh, therapist and then call the women that is asking for the service and okay you can have it on monday at five no i'm busy so it's, it takes forever to get this like to to get that woman into the process and we have all the payment like really awful like i'm doing it every single day i have to check my account it's, it's a mess we're starting this and it's a mess and it's getting worse when you have 600 women asking for help weekly. So we need a platform <laughs> to have it like very easy to pay and to schedule your appointment. That would be the first thing that I will do. And then, um, well, that is, we need that really. Uh, and then I think I will, I will hire people to be part of this organization to, be able to pay them. I would love to give back to the people that today is a volunteer and we don't give anything. I would love to. 
I guess you said a lot of money. I don't have ideas for that much money. I just, I don't need much. <laughs> Sorry, I, much. I just but, wanted you to scream into space, platform. you know. <laughs> I think I it's an excellent plan. Platform. I think also we, we did a survey last year and 50, more than 50% of the thousand women that answered our survey said that their first experience of physical or sexual uh, violence uh, was when they were under 18. And that was very new for us because we are focused on 18 to 34. So I would really invest also in, in those women, those girls that don't have the, the information, maybe developing a theory or something or doing content that they are, they are consuming because more than 50%, I think, is more than enough to, to do something about it. Yes, that's mm. a horrendous statistic. Yeah. Yeah, that's completely crazy. Is there anything, anyone it, that's maybe in the space of arts and music and, um, um, yeah, one creator that you admire that is really, really putting emphasis on this subject? Um, someone that you would like to connect with? Will you help me? <laughs> Yes, that's what we um, do. But <laughs> I was just wondering, maybe you had someone in mind, or you have like a, a famous singer or that someone is just like, oh yeah, yeah, she's really or he's really putting emphasis on this uh, specific subject. Mm, I'm not the one that is going to answer this because Tati is more into that. I'm in the numbers, you know, I'm <laughs> the boring. But I, no, I don't know. I don't know really. I know there are tons of artists that we follow, that we uh, that collaborate with us doing uh, designs, or we have had uh, some musicians like Julieta Venegas, that is from Colombia, eh, Paulina Rubio. I don't know, like a few women here in this part of the world that are, have that have shared the content that we that we put online, but. Mm -mm. I don't know how, who will be my speaker or my, I don't know, this <laughs> person that will help us. I don't know. I, don't know. I haven't think about it. We can, we can figure that out over yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. um, so we, we've got time to make that happen. I think your the statistics of this under 18 is pretty consistent um, mm -hmm. across much of Europe and the United States, certainly. I think those, I think I'm not perfectly positive, but the numbers sound very familiar to me. Mm -hmm. um, the under 18s. What 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 do you suppose? What do you suppose uh, we could put in place, for instance, in in schools? Does is that sort of? I I'm not asking you to expand your agenda. Um, <laughs> it's pretty mm -hmm. big already. Um, but is that is that where you would maybe find? an outlet for um, building from the inside out? I don't think school is something that a teenager will listen to. It's like saying, okay, let's talk with the parents. But there are other uh, medias that they consume very often and they believe like influencers or uh, series, movies. And the point is, you start having, uh, you, okay, you are, you are born in a home with unfortunately, un unfunction, most of us, all of us really. But as soon as you get to your uh, pre, uh, pre-teenager, I don't know if that concept exists in English, but when you are like 11 to 13, you are not a teenager yet. You are so into the content of the romantic idea. So you want to be loved, you want to be picked, you want this prince, and blah, 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 blah. And as soon as you start looking for that guy or experiencing that you like someone, it's the same part of your age that you don't like your body, you don't like your face, you don't like your nose, you don't like your hair. So we get to some negotiations as young girls because we don't want to be the last kiss girl on class. And all the media, all the series, like uh, 
all the content and the quotes and the pictures and everything is telling you like you're supposed to be picked by a guy you are supposed to look like this because this is the body or the hair or whatever that they will love you to have so uh we start some relationships because we we don't want to be the last one to be kissed or the single in the group and we miss that it's very, very important to be uh, clear about what you want, to have limits. But it goes so fast that this little girl doesn't have the information about limits, about mental health, about uh, what is abuse, what is not, you know? So it's, it's just, uh, I, I will suggest to get into the content uh, to change the narrative or the of the love stories because it might sound old when I say she's looking for a prince and she wants to be a princess but there is a very very popular series on Netflix it's called uh, The Kissing Booth I think like has millions of views like v millions and the story is a toxic story so it, it is still exists, that narrative that is pushing women, gir girls, into awful relationships, thinking that that is love and, and that is how the mess starts. So I will change the narrative through content. I'm sorry, it took forever to answer. <laughs> Oh, that's super, super valid. Um, and, and with that, probably we need different role models as well then, like uh, as influencers and YouTubers have so much influence now as well. Mm. And that they'd be honest about relationships and, you know, <laughs> what it could be, what it means, what's is not good, what is, you know, all these things. It's so, such a good, big topic. Um, mm -hmm. It's amazing. So yeah, that is maybe also where artists also have a role to play, like through art and visuals sure. and, you know, communication. Not some music. Music, like, theory, yeah. Yeah. everything hmm. that needs to have a voice. So yeah it's, yeah, it's it's good that like on both sides, I always see like, I don't see like this, uh, this disconnection between the creators and the social organizations because they both have this like role to play, you know, <laughs> they're already playing it. Mm. I just want them to make sure that they can have as much resources as they, they can and, and much control so they can are free to do it. So in that sense as well, I see like super connected, um, the impacts that you have in the world. Hmm. It, it's, I have to say, it's a little confusing. Uh, and here's it, not, nothing you said, Cami, is confusing. <laughs> what I find confusing is that Billie Eilish, for instance, who, who's like a, a musical and performing genius, mm -hmm. um, has, you know, makes a stand for being an independent and in, individually voiced woman. And the, that same week is when she appears in what amounts to a bathing suit on the cover of whatever it was, Vanity Fair, Wired, Rolling Stone. I can't remember what it was. It's, it's, it's so strange how even Hollywood, you know, to your point about the content, Hollywood, the women wore the, the black dress to signify their commitment to the Me Too movement, which is huge. It's huge in that environment to do anything mm -hmm. that's countercultural to the business is huge. Mm -hmm. But like a lot of the black dresses are really low cut and high cut. <laughs> it, it, uh, it does sort of boggle the mind. Mm. Uh, and I, I uh, as a mother of teenage girls, I, uh, I need to be reminded what you said, which is, they're still looking for a prince. Mm. Yeah. And also, as a feminist, I'm looking for my prince too, you know? It's not that I have all solved and I'm not, I don't have fantasies because I was mm. born in a context, so I'm looking for a prince and I try to deconstruct mm. that idea. But... Um, we, we need to try different ways. It's the same analogy that I will use 
when we were speak, talking about getting into NFT world, you know? It's like, okay, we need to try something different. Let's see if it works. I will suggest the same to artists. Like, we need to find, we don't need to find, we just need to try something different, another narrative, another way of talking of, of love or another kind of music, maybe not sexual lyrics all the time just because it's reggaeton. I mean, we can try. If we are creatives, we need to open new paths. And I will do the same. Like, what in the world? Like, how can I talk about love and have tension and a climax story, but with no toxic uh, acting or with no crazy behaviors with no success and we need to look we need to we need to create we need to experience more that in our own life but also put the story uh on the screen or whatever to change the way we see the world we see relationships we are focused on the relationships because 85 percent of the women that are killed are killed by the husband, ex-husband, boyfriend. So there is always a connection. Or most of the time, there's a connection between... There's a no connection, but <laughs> the reality, people connect violence with love. That's weird. But um, when we just did this survey, survey uh, 93% of the women that were abused thought that the guy loved her, loved them, you know? That the abuser loved them. That's crazy too. Like, yeah. what are we thinking? Like, how is how, how is all this information and stories uh, changing the most natural and genuine way to experience love? Like, what in the world? Now we think love is violence, or it can be together. Like, there's something mm -hmm. that we that we miss. <laughs> yeah, no, I completely agree. How is it that like? you're holding in your head that dichotomy of like someone who treats you that way. And similarly, you're convinced that they have, they hold like such affection for you. And I really do agree with you in the sense that there's a lot of narratives that are emerging from different films, different series, different whatever, that, that idolize love in such, such toxic ways. And they, they normalize really toxic relationships. And, and I mm -hmm. think there's, there's definitely something to be said for that. I think as well what you said, Cami and, and, and Wendy and Nico, about the the role of creators and artists, especially as like um as as having this influence, you know, and the role of influencers in young people's lives. Um mm. do you think sort of I'm I'm thinking about this in terms of sort of like the role of NFTs. Do we see this as like is there power in NFTs to sort of to sort of push a different narrative? Is there power in creators to be able to push a different narrative? Or do we need to, is it a system, is it a, a problem with the system itself? Do you know what I mean? Like how, how much can influencers yes. do? Yeah. I don't think NFT is the solution, but mm -hmm. I think NFT will bring together people that is able to change the world. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. I'm not here because of the money that we can get from this platform you know it's yeah. just i think the community that is around nft topic and art and technology we are those that can change the world we are there's not like here's the conversation you know <laughs> yeah the about the ecosystem about uh, human rights about technology about democracy here so it's not about nft giving giving us money or changing the movies or all mm -hmm. the narratives it's just the people that is here is we are the ones and uh, that's why I, I think we as uh, uh, organization should be here you know is, and, and and see what is the outcome then but i will say the most positive thing is to bring together people that is creative and have a certain knowledge of technology. I think there's, yeah, that's, <laughs> I think there is. I mean, and also that they're not, there is not a middle person that uh, maybe the artist of the reggaeton has like amazing poetic lyrics, but the producer says like, no, no, it needs to be like this because that's what sells, you know? Yeah. It's that middle person that like putting the creator really in control of their art. Uh, I mean, that 
middle a voice is going to disappear and there will be more freedom in your true art expression um, and you, you will find your audience and you can prove that value now and be more in control so i think that will take at least some barriers away uh, of not expressing your your true uh, emotions and your true uh, message that you want to put out in the world as a as a creator mm. Yeah, I love that, Nico. Agency is a huge part of this. I really agree. Um, I'm, I'm also, I want to go back to something else you mentioned, Cami, um, about therapy. Um, and have you, I, I recognize that without asking this question, mm -hmm. there's huge value in it working from the inside out. I, I want to ask the sort of first question and, uh, and then a sort of second that follows it. Uh, the first question is, have, have you had enough um, weeks and months of being able to provide therapy services that you have been able to see some benefits and outcomes? Yeah, we have been doing this mm. since a year. And after the every, every single process, we gave the girls uh, a survey of the service. So we get like, how do you start it? How do you feel when you start it? How are you leaving this uh, process? What do you feel? What do you want to do in the short term? Blah, blah, blah. So they gave us a review and we, and they shared testimony. So we use that to improve also what we do. So we have, I don't know, like hundreds of great stories. that's amazing amazing and i i'm also wondering the the therapists that you have participating are they also volunteering or are they um underwritten or how, how do they participate uh has volunteers but we have tried two different financial models <laughs> we are in the second try uh, now we have for, we have two protocols. So if you are, uh, you, you as a patient, you can pay whatever you want or you can, because we cannot ignore that there is economic violence too. So we earn less money. And if you are with, with a guy that takes the money home, you don't have any penny. So you can have free therapy or you can pay uh, $70 the session 12, I think 18 and $22. We have those five options. 85% of our uh, therapists say zero uh, from, uh, sorry, from the girls that apply uh, answer zero. They don't have money, they, don't, they, they cannot pay. But then mm. if you pay mm. uh, seven, 12, 18 or $22, we have part of that goes as a, as a donation to us as a Cruces Rosas movement. And part of that, more than 60% goes to the therapy girl, the psychology. So mm. we are trying that model. We used to have pay whatever you want and we as an organization mm. will get 30% and the therapy will receive 70% once a month. But mm. really it was very hard. So now we have five options free and to twenty two dollars the session. Right, right. You know, one of the I'm, I'm just thinking through the one of the things that one of our founders, uh, original founders, uh, Manu El Alzuru um, says is, is that the forms of human creativity, the forms of human creativity incredibly wide and diverse and it doesn't just appear for instance in in that the psychologists with whom you work are also creating a form of ex 
expressing a form of human creativity that has enormous impact, that has impact in both small and large ways, even through one person. Right. Hmm. Yeah. We all can be part of the change. <laughs> we don't need to be artists. Mm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the whole the whole lines are blurring anyway. <laughs> There's so many like social organizations that have artists and creators, communities around them and inside. And on the other side, there are so many creators as well that want to, uh, that are already having uh, some kind of organization or some kind of uh, directed impact. I mean, that line is also completely blurring out. Um, it's it's that that what you said before, Kami, as well. It's the community, the people that come together around this purpose, and they do share this purpose, and they do that in any way that they can and that they do best. And these lines are not so. Um, it's not a black and white thing. It's a. Uh, it's all of us here. So, I'm really glad to see all of us here and talking about this. Mm. Yeah. I think it's, it's it's a good conversation to have and and to be more flexible about what we do as, a, as organizations. We we know we need to have like two apartments. I will say the one that is doing all the things and on time, you know, in the right way, taking care, like don't doing mistakes. But then we like everybody needs to have a second part where we are able to try and to do research, to connect, to, to talk about dreams and, and create. So there's important to be efficient, but to be creative always. Along those lines, what, what do you think um, makes for a good collaboration or good partnership? What do you mean? Sorry, I mean. Mm. So we're we're um, we together. Okay. Um, are are going to enter into um, a collaboration of sorts? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And w what would what's useful to you? What's the most helpful things that a partner or collaborator can do with or for? Mm hmm. Mm. I would love to get more more information about uh, your platform. I think you are doing it. You are sharing information. You are like this event. Uh, I'm sure you have some where you talk about NFT and artists. And I will love to see all the stakeholders in this project, you know, like who I'm connecting with. But in, in the other hand, I would love to have this space to share what we do, like not just present ourselves for the artist to speak us, okay? But sharing all the results that we have, I think that is clear. Mm, that, is, mm. that is the main thing for any organization like us, like to share all the things that you are doing with the money. So where is that space for us to bring testimonies or show the people that are collaborating, like, you know, this money that you gave us really is, is being used in a terrific way and like, making people feel that what they give is really uh, useful and is really uh, well uh, invested. I think, I don't know if you have that, but I think for an organization like us, it's something that we, that we value to be transparent and to show that. Nicolene, I, I think this question is, this comment is for you. Can you give some thoughts on how um, organizations impact and stories and is testimonials and um, successes, whether small or large, what are some ways of doing good that might uh, be platforms to express those stories? 
like what is the the purpose of it or what is a, a way to do it what are some of the ways that we we are likely to do it um uh, yeah i mean for us because it's like it's an ecosystem so we are not just like uh one person donating money to another person it's for us it's a, more about the connections and uh, the connections are made through emotions and emotions are being told by stories and transferred into stories. That's the easiest way for people to connect with what uh, you have experienced, what I have experienced, what, uh, what has been actually materialized in human value of these streams of, of money going back and forth and the connections that uh, people have made so um, the stories uh, are is a very um, important aspect of it um, because that is where you actually connect and you can actually see what impact has been really created uh, with the 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 start of this giving economy and where it ends up so the stories that is for us the most valuable thing that comes back from whatever uh, has been given to the social organization and what is that story? Like, there's so many stories already along the way. Like, how did it happen? The connection between the creator and the organization. Um, what happened? Uh, what was your feeling or excitement when you received these funds of money? How did that make you feel? Uh, who in the organization are impacted by that? And of course, who? Uh, how it has rippled out. Uh, across the organization and of course beyond the the purpose of the organization what it's been doing so when we get like the stories back that is where uh, everybody in the ecosystem in, in, and in the first place of course also the creator that has chosen this organization to create the impact is is really getting emotionally attached and can see what actually happened uh with these digital goods that are there, like uh, as in a maybe non-tangible way for some people, uh, and that is where it becomes real. So these stories are like uh, the most valuable things that will have the output of of the ecosystem because that is where touching lives and touching uh, people. So this is something that we're definitely searching for, and. For all the organizations that are going to be connected to the ecosystem, this is the thing that we ask them to share with us. Um, at this moment, we don't have like a super verified, uh, numbered uh, database of impact assessment. So uh, we use these stories as a way to to show what impact has been created, at least like for now. Does that does that, that answer the question? <laughs> I went too far. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you went. I never think you go too far. Um, I think you've 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 um, you've echoed what Cami was saying, which is that the stories are there to be are there, and they mm -hmm. need to be told. Um, and I also heard a second question: what Cami was saying, and, and Cami, you can correct me. Um, where in the ecosystem, on which pages, platforms, in which Discord channels or Twitter spaces can um, doing good further distribute and share those impact stories. Yeah, for now is the especially that social layer that uh, at launch we still have the Discord and the Twitter and we have the blog. And, I mean, there's different ways to tell the story it can be like a full article and interview or it can be a conversation like the one we are having now uh, it can also be like short quotes that come back from people that have been impacted by by this uh, that is more for like a twitter or a tweet or maybe an instagram post but we are for sure using all the social media to get these stories out um, as well as on the ecosystem and on the platform itself uh, there is a space for social organizations that is there like a personal profile page. Uh, the stories will have a space there too. Uh, that will maybe not be at launch, but uh, in a later phase. But there is a space that uh, these stories can be broadcasted. Um, yeah, that's. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think there are uh, too many options to to share all those stories. And one thing is how we give reach to those stories 
And the other is how we as organizations are open to share with the artists, for example, what we do with the money. Mm -hmm. Is something like to to be transparent and to also convince the artist that he or she picked us and we are doing something awesome with what we receive through his work or her work, right? Mm -hmm. So I will I would love to suggest that we keep what we do as social impact organization. Stories are better than just data, I think. It will mm -hmm. be more our kind of way like our way of saying what we we want to do like numbers we have tons but if, if you bring a good story i think it pays a lot yeah definitely it connects more and i think for now we have like a special discord channel specifically for creators to connect with the social organizations so that would be definitely a channel to have conversations going um, there is another way as well that we have are launching. It's a, an ambassador program for social organizations like yourself that really uh, want to help other organizations to get on board and to share in this in this new world of uh, the right. NFTs and the tag and all of this uh, these new possibilities. And they're also like they're becoming like ambassador for for getting in other social organizations and they will tell the stories also in their own way to their own audience so this is a way that we can fastly scale up as well the spread of these stories uh, not just through our own uh, media channels but also to spread that out um, between the social organizations and to put it out there in different channels and different audiences that maybe we don't, didn't even thought about yet <laughs> right But yeah, thanks so much for that, Cami. And it is, it's, it's about, it is very much about what you were saying about like, you know, data is data and data can be useful to understanding a situation, but it's the stories at the end of the day that are going to connect with people and really make their money, you're going to make them feel like their, their donations, their contributions, their effort is actually being put towards good use. And that's, I think that's something that we recognize in that is that we, we love the data but the data has to tell a story. It has to tell a meaningful story. Um, I guess to that point, I kind of wanted to deep dive back into kind of what you do a little bit more. And with with the idea of stories and with the idea of messages and NFTs and the beauty of art to tell messages in very succinct ways, uh, is there, in all of the work you do, and it's probably a massive question, but in all of the work that you do, is there a, is there a message that is important to you that you to get out there what do you want people to know about the work you do is it a single data point is it like is there is there is there a mindset that you want to imbue on people like anything and everything within that space if that makes sense if that's not too big a question mm, i don't know if i get what you ask but let me try mm -hmm, if i have like a key message that i will love people to know is love doesn't hurt we use it a lot it it is not our slogan or anything, but I think that's the main goal that we have to communicate through a lot of platforms, uh, artists, or whatever we do. We need to go and, uh, and, and I don't like the word convince, but show that love doesn't hurt. It will help a lot if we, if we are able to change that in some uh, women thoughts. Um, that was what you were asking. Yeah, honestly, that was that was amazing. I was not expecting that in any way. Wow, I really, <laughs> I really, really love that. Yeah, love doesn't hurt, or we should say it, uh, amor doesn't hurt as well. So, so true. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Uh, that's our message. Uh, that's uh, we couldn't have a better message to to end on. And uh, thank you so much for joining. Cami, it was a wonderful debut. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we would love to have you join us again. Sure, sure. If you're willing. <laughs> yes, please. I am. We're Brilliant. part of the same community now, so yay! We can keep doing things. We are. Too. <laughs> love the sound of that. Thank you so much, Cami. <laughs> Nicolene, would you like to wrap up? Well, I don't know if I will have the honor here. 
Um, I just, I'm really happy. I'm very glad that Kami came here. And I would love to continue this series uh, with even more social organizations. And uh, also, um, I would love to hear from all of you that are here present. Is like if there's someone that you think that should be here, that we should invite, or if there is something that we can uh, bring different people together in the group, we'd love to hear your ideas. And I think that, yeah, Kami said it well, like... Uh, mm. Yeah, we've, I cannot get a better message out for this. <laughs> it's a perfect <laughs> ending. So thank you very much, everybody here. Thank and you. Soon. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Best for a good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're going. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye.